Okay. Hiru, do you say your name Hiru or Hiru? Hiru. Hiru. Oh, my okay. bad. Hiru, good to know. Hiru. All right. Oh. So, oh, it's I didn't like notice a... you guys are saying it wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody so... says Lenoka, and it's like, no, it's Lenica, but I just don't care. <laughs> so, like, I know it's I know Lenica. It's Okay, well, I think we are ready to start recording. Hold on, I'm just a little, I'm freaking out here. I'm having a little, <laughs> Hiru is in this call with us right now. This is exciting, kind of awesome. man. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Ooh, so here, don't thank him yet. <laughs> See, oh, you sound thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why okay. I use a fake voice. <laughs> yeah, try, try, try to contain your excitement, Hiru. Hiru, Hiru, Hiru. Hiru, Hiru. <laughs> okay. Ugh. All right, here we go. Right. Hello, everyone. This is Gomorath here. I got my host with me, Linica, and we are Taming Azeroth. Hi, this is Linica. Um, this is going to be our first video in our series, Taming Azeroth, where we discuss all things pet battles in World of Warcraft. And we have an awesome guest star with us, Hiru himself. Hello. That's your cue. <laughs> That's your cue, Hiru. <laughs> Hello, this is Hiru himself. This is Hero. Also known as Hero. her rumor red X or Hero's pet battles. So it's it's Hero, but Haruma. Haruma. Oh, I guess that is weird. <laughs> that is weird because that's why it kind of throws me off. Although I guess I don't really have an excuse for calling you Hiro either way. <laughs> either one, fine. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, you you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, it's not it like is. it's my real name or anything. Yeah, <laughs> your stalkers probably know that by now. <laughs> oh my god, you have no idea. <laughs> Oh man, the, the the problems with being a superstar. I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh yeah, superstar. I don't know. You're about to pass a hundred subs, Linica. That's that I'm super excited about that. Right I just there. started like a couple of weeks ago, and it's been really good going well. Now that I can actually edit videos, maybe I can put out good good quality content <laughs> for oh. my things. Yeah, honestly, it's taken me forever to pass a hundred subs, but I didn't. I mean, I started out just making PVE guides mm. and. Half of them, like I got from either Reddit or from Hiru or Hazel. So, yeah, yeah Hazel, Hazel will probably always be the best, the best go-to for guides. She does such good quality content. Oh. That's like, for me, unfortunately, whenever I'm kind of trying to come up with a guide, I usually go too specific and trying to find a perfect counter, and I'll end up using like some pet that probably sub one percent of the entire player base has. <laughs> And then they're like, uh, your purple puffer doesn't help me at all. I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oops, uh, just use an Emperor Crab. And they're like, yeah, I figured that out from Hazel already. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're yeah, using... purple puffer is so good, but he's Like, so he's expensive. amazing, but nobody has him. Like, I think, I know. Gomrath, didn't you finally just get yours? Yeah, I picked mine up today. Um, nice. I got one on the Dalaran auction house. It's where I have one tune on Dalaran. And the reason I picked that server is because it has like some of the cheapest pet prices. And so I got a purple puffer for 20k. Oh, nice. I got mine for yeah, free. That's a steal. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I had a fan just give me a crap ton of super rare pets one day. That's oh, what's wow. up. That's awesome. Uh, I had Candy Andy, my, my awesome fan, gave me the orphan that for my spotlight video and that thing is expensive on my server like over 100k oh, uh no matter what get? level or anything the orphan fell that that new uh legion oh pet, yeah I he gotta is get one so of those. strong like he's a nice strong tier one pet and uh, i know i saw your video on it i was like yeah. oh shit <laughs> yeah the, thing the that, other that fell bat so... suck so i didn't oh even yeah i remember you did a whole video just dedicated to how bad he is <laughs> 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 that, was, that was hilarious oh, yeah, also um, yeah, no, he's been... pretty bad Oh, to me, call it. Good friends with Hazel since she started her channels. I can probably oh, awesome. get her on here if you guys want. Oh my gosh, that'd yeah. Be, that'd be what's up. Yeah, that would she's, be amazing. She's great. I've been in one of her streams. She's just so cheerful, and I love her Love her guides and her videos. They're great. Yep. Yeah, when I first got into pet battles about almost a year ago at this point, um... No, it was after summer. It was in it was in the fall of last year. I just binge watched like every single one of Hazel's videos about pet wa pet battles, and then every one of yours, Hero. Like, and then all of your Q and As. I just would. I've got a TV down in my basement where I play, and <laughs> anyway, I just had it playing as I was playing. Wow. That well, is yeah, a they're lot perfect. of rambling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they're so great whenever you're just gaming and you can just like kind of turn, you know, hero on in the back and just listen to, you know, whatever you happen to say on that day about, 
you know, football or whatever. God damn. <laughs> I recorded a Q&A last night, and I had to stop myself from going on another football rant. <laughs> so I was like, oh, shit, I, I get so many complaints when I talk about football. I got to stop this. I, whatever I do, I can never, ever bring up work, because if I start talking about work, you know, I'm a cook. I will probably just go on for 30 straight minutes talking about it. Oh, so I have yeah, to try to keep work mean. completely out of my videos or I know I will rant forever. Yeah. Uh, kind of well, like in Disco Doggies when he talks about Hearthstone all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's videos get marked as, as Hearthstone videos, even yeah. those doing the battles. I thought that was funny. He talks so much about Hearthstone that the YouTube flagged his video as a Hearthstone video. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he puts Hearthstone as his tags and everything. It's really uh, shit, honestly, funny. sometimes. Oh, so, um, let's talk about all the new pets. Like, you know, we've had new pets in the meta now for, let's see, today's Thursday, so for, it's like the third day. Uh, Hyru, have you got to play with a Sneaky Marmot yet? Uh, Sneaky Marmot? Is that the the Rogue one? Uh, no, one yeah, yeah, it is from the Rogue. It comes in several breeds, but there's an SS breed, and it's got Blinding Powder and Smoke Bomb. What's its speed? Uh, Three forty-one. So it will oh, outspeed. Yeah. yeah. So it outspeed. I mean, gosh dang it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's then amazing. he has a, a basic attack, which is either a critter or a humanoid. So very yeah. cool. Damn. I mean, um, dang. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> so if you run blinding awesome. powder, smoke bomb, and chomp, like you can burn down a. Uh, you can burn down a, a Wicked Soul, an SS Wicked Soul, almost entirely before he can even hit you once. Oh, so wait. Smoke Bomb's the one that blocks an attack for the entire team, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's like an AoE uh, ethereal. Mm -hmm. And it's only for one turn? Yeah. Yeah. It would have been so nice if we had that back in WAD. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, versus the AoE meta. Mm -hmm. Can you buy it on the auction house? Yes, you can. If you have a lot of uh, gold. <laughs> Well, I use yeah. all my gold for well, pets. No, it's not. It's not a lot of gold. Um, I picked up mine for four K on Dalaran. Nice. Oh wow! Yeah. So they're already sell like the highest selling on that server were you know just like nine K. Mm. So it's already bottoming out as pretty low because you can get it on your rogue in about thirty minutes of pickpocketing. Hmm. Where do you pickpocket at? Besides, so on, uh, what you have. Well, that's where I went. Uh, I just went to Suramar and pickpocketed all the humanoids there. But you can pickpocket demonoids as well, or demons as well, so they don't have to be humanoids. Oh, because my rogue's only like 101. Oh, wow. Um, you might have to be 110. I don't know. You get a quest yeah, from yeah. Grifter. Yeah. You uh, I mean, you from... can do the pickpocket stuff before, uh, like around level 100, but you can't get into Suramar until 110. Oh, gotcha. Because um, the mobs there don't scale. You know, uh, out in Stormheim might not be terrible. Oh, I can't like, find any farming spots. I just gave up. Oh. Wait, so who is Grifter? Uh, he's a vendor who sells, like, all the goofy things. You know, the necklaces and... He's is it, just... is for just for rogues? Yeah. I've never heard of him. Oh, is that, like, where... Uh, what's his name? Slightly Impressive got his name? Maybe. Doesn't he like? Doesn't he like name his one of his like his main grifter or something? Yeah, that's what I, I was wonder. thinking. You were talking about. I wonder if that's a coincidence. I love his channel. He has hilarious videos that you know come out like once a year. Like, I watch <laughs> all of his videos too. I really like his it's Iron so Man series. Mm -hmm. He had to eat because he, like he died. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I love his channel. Well, I was just playing with the sneaky marmot earlier, and he is so powerful versus. Um, like Wicked Soul, even Bone Serpent, because you can blind a Bone Serpent when they like the first round. You blind a Bone Serpent, so you can block Bone Barrage and Call Darkness. And then when he goes for the Nocturnal Strike, you throw out Smoke Bomb because he can still hit through a Call Darkness, or he can still hit you with, uh, you know, Nocturnal Strike uh, through a blind, but no, he, he can't, can't hit it. Yeah, you, no, he can not actually, as long as you're blinded. Um, if so, like, if you blind uh, nocturnal, a, a I mean, boat. nocturnal strike isn't like blood in the water. It doesn't have a guaranteed hit. If if there's darkness out and it's not an elemental, it does. It's just yeah. uh increased chance to hit 
Blood in the Water is the one that always hits. I am like 99.9% sure sure. that even through a blind, it will hit. We can test it. I'm like 100% certain. I remember because there's a celestial pet that you have to... That uses blind and everything, and I couldn't hit him through a nocturnal strike because I thought that too. And I was like, oh, oh, that's right. It just increases the chance to hit. It's not a guarantee. I wonder if blinding poison. Linica, where are you? You're in Stormwind? Okay, wait there for me. Yeah. Well, I'm on a I'm on an alliance tune. It's um, okay. I I'm wonder if it's the difference card. between like blinding poison and blinding powder because I I know I remember what you're talking about. It's the triple humanoids in the Celestial tournament, right? Yeah. 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 The, the yeah. I'm in Stormwind. Oh, right. Wait, by it the says bank. always hits if target is blinded. Yeah. So you know, if Call Darkness right. is out, yeah, because Call Darkness it counts all targets as blinded. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Hey, we can't actually pet battle. Uh, I'll meet you out by the gates okay. because we can't actually pet battle. I remember from that uh, the tournament Disco Doggy um, did. We had actually uh, battle out by the gates. Yeah, that's fine. Oh. So, do you want to do like the darkness pet or the blind? Because that's a good thing to test. So uh, you just bring in a bone serpent, and yeah, I will blind you because I actually have a level up my. You know what? I might be wrong about this. Okay. So everybody who's listening to this podcast, you saw it first here. Gomorath Mm -hmm. knew something about pet battles that Hiru didn't. (laughs) But the only reason I know that is... To be fair, Hiru has like seven other channels that are higher priority for him. (laughs) And the reason I know that is because my Dark Rat team. That video, Mm -hmm. it's my most successful video. It got almost 3,000 views or so. Dang. Yeah, I know. That's why I put it out. I tagged it really well as the best Legion PvP pet battle team. And uh, anyway, it's done pretty well. Okay. So first try it with your uh, Marmot. Yeah. And then try it with your... uh... Do you have it out? Yeah. And then do you want... Yeah, here. I got my Marmot. We'll just test it really quick here. Alrighty. Okay. That's a pretty good team. Yeah. (laughs) All right, so I'll throw out my Call Darkness first. Go ahead and yep. blind that. And then I will blind you. Nice. Okay. Just All right, so I'm going to go for the Eternal Strike. You are blinded under under, under Call Darkness. So. Yeah. Go okay. for that. So Nocturnal I blind strike. you here. You are 100% blinded, and you will see through it every time. Yeah. I had a negative 60% hit chance on my Nocturnal Strike, and it landed. Yeah. Ha-ha, oh. I win. You know, <laughs> I might be thinking about that in reverse. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, I think I might have actually gone against that guy and it hit under blind and I was surprised, not the other You're like, what? That's a negative, negative hit chance. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering if there was a difference between blinding poison and blinding uh, powder, but I didn't think so. So no, yeah. They're the yeah. same. Except yeah. for so one of them counts to you as poisoned. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really matter but it's that. really not, yeah, it's not worth the extra turn cooldown. I'm pretty sure they're going to nerf that blinding powder to a four round cooldown. Yeah, it's it's it way too quick. Yeah, yeah it's three that's rounds. what makes it so good. Is it's the um, old school? Yeah, it's Death old school blinding poison, poison. cooldown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's three round cooldown. If you have like two of them, and the other person doesn't have a way to go faster or like block attacks, you can literally just use two sneaky marmots and uh, use your blinding powder. Swap out. Use your blinding powder on your other one. Swap back in, and your first one's back off cooldown, and you can do that forever and never be hit. Or you can just sub in a. Uh... Alec plushy and really never get hit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that Alec plushy is pretty pretty strong tier one pet there. Oh, uh, hey, I had and a the, really good team back in the day with him. I remember you're so cute, team. That did well. That did it really did well. Really well. Back I even when showed Ore like Eater when he, was broken. Man. Yeah, it was when the Ore Eater was still broken. I don't think it works mm-hmm. anymore though. Yeah, because so well. the cooldown on uh, the shield. If you use yeah. like a fiendish imp and then probably a tarot claw, you'll still do really well uh, with an Alec plushy. Yeah, but they don't really need the Alec Plushies help. Nah, they're so good already. You just throw That's a Wicked Soul and you go 100 no. Yeah, you just have Terra Claw and a Fiendish Imp and you're good to go with any other pet. Pretty mm-hmm. much, yeah. They're so strong. Um, yeah, the thing with the Ore Eater was Alec Plushie was necessary for that strategy to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he was very, very, very dependent on it. On that free switch. Yeah. yeah. So the sw- the switch with the plushie that always pulls in your pet that's the next one, not highest health or anything. It's just the one yeah. that's to the left. Next one in line. The- okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the nice thing is your elk plushie takes the damage, and then it brings in your other pet. So yeah. with that high health pool, you can basically mm-hmm. just soak nukes and everything on him. Occasionally, you'll even get lucky and get a dodge from that twenty five percent dodge move. Oh yeah. And then- 
Yeah, and that's actually that. really good. Sometimes I, I've actually dodged like Iron Starlet's trying to one shot me for some reason. I don't know why they did that, but <laughs> like you can dodge anything with it as a twenty five percent chance to just randomly dodge. No oh, cooldown. Yeah, I dodge you so much with it. that. I totally forgot about it. it has no cooldown that lasts for two turns. Yeah, it's mm. like cute face. I think. Um, yeah, it's except I think yeah. cute face lasts a little longer. But um, yeah. <laughs> So speaking of feign deathing or, you know, getting that free switch, another one of the new pets they added is the dig rat. It's another rogue quest uh, or from the coins and it has kick and feign death. So you can be really, really irritating with this guy. And he does come and I think it's, I'm fairly sure it's a speed, speed breed. Um, yeah. I haven't leveled mine up yet, but I just picked the one on the auction house that had the highest speed. Yeah, yeah, mine has 13 speed, so that's going to be... Uh, I think it ends at 325 speed is what a max level speed speed one is in. Mm -hmm. And you can also choose survival, so that just makes him kind of like... Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's sort of the new prairie mouse where he has that high speed and he has survival and then he has kick too. So killing him on a slower pet is going to be really hard without a dot or an AoE because you can kick him, you can survival... Can, so you can uh, you, you live again on your next survival round. You can swap out to the back line, come back in when your cooldowns are back up in another turn. And uh, he could survive. be pretty nice. Yeah. Wow. So you, be, would you run cool. scratch on him over comeback? Or Probably. what would you run? Just because uh, comeback is comeback pretty sucks. is pretty bad. Even though it can break decoys, like if that's your only attack, it's it's pretty weak. Yeah. Um, you want to run scratch. It would be so much better if he had flurry. Like yeah. he would be a solid tier one right now. He's probably a high tier two pet with his move set. Uh, he's good, but he's just not like you know. I wouldn't oh, put him on the same playing field as a Emperor Crab or a Fiendish Imp or anything. Yeah, the heavy hitter. But the Emperor is... Crab is still totally broken. Like yeah, he's he's really strong right he now. Get three v one all kinds of pets. I went against a mechanical Pandaren Dragonling, a rabbit, and a unborn valk and my barb my that's the name of my crab barbarian he's he 3v1 their whole team yeah mine really? is now <laughs> the mechanical pandaren dragon lane should have given him some problems no he wasn't he like he just couldn't put out enough damage through my shell shield and the heels that's hilarious he must have got really unlucky with his breaths <laughs> yeah they were all super low end <laughs> yeah that's but, pretty that's pretty rough um yeah. And the thing is, he's allowed in the next tournament. The one on uh, the one on Monday that I'll be streaming. I uh, mm. hope you can make it. Oh, Pandaren. Uh, yeah, it's all Pandaria and then, you know, Deep Hole. But there's nothing in Deep Hole that has a chance against an Emperor Crab. So you're only allowed <laughs> to use him in one of your teams. But you can also use a Spire Brown Crab and you can use a Shore, uh, shore Crab. So although the Emperor Crab's the best, you could have one of those, you know, strong crabs on all three of your teams if you want. So, just yeah. outthink the meta and play pets that counter them. Oh yeah, I mean I expect to see a lot <laughs> of moths because there's like seven different moths that you can use from uh, Pandaria. There's like the fungal, the amber, the flame ring's really cool. Um, I have a pretty cool team I'm going to be doing with flame ring and uh, cyclone. You can probably guess what my flame ring's uh, ability is from that. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a really cool. And there's so many other moths. So that'll be yeah it hits you it's not as good as rain dance but it's a nine round buff and uh it puts your cyclone at 55 percent hit chance and you have uh oh it's cyclone on... now right yeah mm -hmm. so it's so nimbus is actually not half bad uh if you've seen roscoe he just put out a video with um i think he was using not curse berman but widget he was using widget who has spirit claws and that's a hundred percent hit chance under nimbus which is really pretty strong oh nice usually with spirit claws doesn't really miss very often. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not but uh, really having that 100% but... chance is... Yeah, it is still pretty nice. I remember it's when it was only 10% right and it was a useless ability. That was so bad. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't run anything except Moth Dust if you had the choice. But now yeah. it's actually pretty good. Uh, not tier 1 or anything, but pretty strong. Hmm. Yeah, and... So what what do you guys think of the? Have you seen? I don't. I haven't purchased the uh, bronze. Let's see the ageless bronze drake, or the proto bronze or the bronze proto whelp. Yeah, I did I go against one. a uh, an ageless bronze drake, and he does have quite a bit of healing with rewind and ancient blessing. 
which is hmm. kind of annoying, especially if you don't have anybody on your team who's strong versus Dragonkins. Like, if you're not running a Bone Serpent or Call Darkness or a Humanoid, he's really hard to kill. Oh, that's true. Those are pretty good together. Mm -hmm. I'm the most excited about the Bronze Proto Whelp. That new Bend Time ability is just a six round cooldown. And, I don't uh, try that. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be so good with like decoy or bubble. Um, those are the two main ones I can think of that are going to be really strong with it, but I'm sure there's other cooldowns I haven't thought of that it will be really strong when paired with. Mm, what about all never cooldowns, more. right? Yeah, it resets all, all cooldowns, yeah. So, yeah, so you just switch in a pet that's super cooldown dependent, mm -hmm. like a Death Adder Hatchling or something. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It'll be very strong. I, I'm, I'm excited about him. I think Squirky could be a really strong pet with him because that clobber and bubble cooldown. You just kind of use those cooldowns, don't take any damage, then swap into your dragon, you know, reset uh, all your uh, cooldowns, come right back in. Is Squirky really that nice. fast, though? It's not that fast, but if you throw in a Dazzling Dance user, that'll be really strong. Say, like an Alpine Foxling, a Squirky, and then the dragon, who's not that fast. They'll all be pretty fast under Dazzling Dance, and that uh, Dazzling oh. Dance with Squirky's really strong because, um, you know, that puts him at, I think... He's not like quite so as fast seven. as a Terra Claw, but um, <laughs> you know you have the Alpine Foxling there to take care of the undeads who would be strong against Squirky, and it's really fun. Hmm. Usually, my experience, if it takes three pets to set up a combo, it doesn't really work out well. Usually, yeah, but mm -hmm. it could be fun. Um, no, you're yeah, right. It though. does make for fun teams, but yeah, not exactly a, a Terra Claw. One team or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, have you been doing any PvP lately, Hero? Uh, not really. Not since that video I made like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been having it, some health problems. Yeah, I'll well, help you get better soon. Yeah, so do I. Oh, yeah, that's it's tough, tough stuff. Oh. Um, right now, my meta is really, really saturated with just tons and tons of bone serpents. And I'm sure that's across most servers. But I actually haven't been running into too many Terror Claws. Yeah, the Terror so Claw kind of suffers under darkness. Mm. Just get a rabbit. Yeah, seriously. Uh, I almost lost a match where I had, I had his whole team dead. And then he had a rabbit with 11 health. And then I had my Bone Serpent at full health. And he got my Bone Serpent to the round of immunity without taking 11 damage. <laughs> <laughs> so, Same. Yeah, rabbits are very, very strong versus the Bone uh, Serpent. I think I had a rabbit two shot at me once when I was on a Bone Serpent. Oh, wow. Just yeah, they get that triple crit and then a... Yeah, like a triple crit. A, oh, dang, my that's gosh. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Gotta love rabbits. But they're so healthy because otherwise bone serpents would be literally all you would see. Like if rabbits mm -hmm. didn't exist, like all you can do is alpine fox and vengeful porcupine, and that's just about it. Yeah. Oh I like <laughs> I love the porcupine. Oh it man. I remember so when I first pet. saw your video your video, Hero, about like the top ten um PvP pets. And like I got to number one and I saw that it was the vengeful porcupine. I was like, no, that's a terrible <laughs> pet. Like, that, like it's not that bad. But like, there's no way that's number one because I never tried it myself. Mm, and then I went yeah. out and leveled one. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this amazing pet I've never seen before? Yeah, because yeah, it it's takes so some, much fun. It takes a lot of thought to use it. And oh it's yeah, it's clean up super pet. high skill pet. Yeah, super high skill cap to use effectively. Yeah, because you have to know everything okay. about your opponent in order to mm -hmm. predict everything with the spirit spikes. Yeah, and all it takes is like a surprise, oops, adrenaline rush, or an overtune, and you're like, oh, well, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> you got to really, really think out your matches with the with the Ventral Porky Pet, because he isn't just going to face roll anybody. You know, if you end up with like a humanoid versus him, doesn't matter how fast you get. If it's an idol, he'll probably still just tank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the idol would completely destroy the pet. But mm -hmm. I've had so many matches where... I got unlucky and they cleaned up two of my pets and I just had Porky Pet left and he was able to yeah. clean up all three by himself. Yeah. One of my favorite combos with him is putting any sort of rot user because you can kind of leave them with a rot for a 1v1 against eventual Porky Pet and uh, you probably don't want to be on the uh, the other side's <laughs> end of that deal because that, <laughs> that, that flank just hits so stinking hard. 
with your base really ra- beast racer up, up it's yeah, almost especially when you're below 50 percent oh y'all, man yeah. you'll just two shot them with with flanks and you have your your spirit spikes it's so much fun mm-hmm. uh, so speaking of the tarot claw uh linica for a while has been thinking about a counter so blizzard if you listen to your community listen well to this man so here's what we need here's what we need uh, the the tarot claw doesn't need to be nerfed for pve it is so great for you know any sort of newer player to be able to have a fighting chance against some of these you know the tamers for someone like me are not that hard to beat because i have 800 pets at my disposal but yeah. for someone who's starting out you know if they have an anubisath idol and mpd a, a, a mechanical pandaren dragon link and a tarot claw and maybe an emperor crab just those four pets and okay let's say let's let's round it out with a nice five they have a rabbit and then those other four they can do so much uh they can they can power level so many pets with just those four you know those five pets but if you take the tarot claw he's just so strong in pve and there's probably a lot of people who might say oh you know just put dodge and nature's board on the same tier so they have to make a choice between them and i just don't think that that's what they need to do i don't think they need to change the tarot claw but what they do need is um, the way to t- counter a Terra Claw is to do aquatic damage and take weak damage from his flying, his uh, his Alpha Strike. There are currently birds who do aquatic damage, so if you know if the Terra Claw is running Claw, you can at least have a fighting chance. One of the best ones is probably that uh, the, the, the it's from the Timeless Isle. Do you all know what I'm talking about? Um, um, the jade. No. It's got surge. Yeah, uh-huh. jade, jade. The jade. The jade. The crane, azure the crane. crane the jade no, crane. Yeah, the azure crane. Yeah, yeah. yeah the azure like crane. Too, stick. Yeah, he has a yep. heal. He has a surge, and he takes weak damage from claw. So if you're running into somebody who's just spamming the Q with a tarot claw running claw instead of alpha strike for whatever reason, um, you know you can counter that. But if you're running the the most common build, it, you know you're running up against alpha strike. Uh, nature's ward and dodge you need a dragon kin with aquatic damage and if you look there's literally nothing there is not a single dragon in the entire meta with aquatic damage there is one technically in the dream welpling because he has what's it called toxic Acid skin, skin. <laughs> yeah. yeah toxic skin but that does five percent it does percent based da- base damage so if you're going up against an elemental it doesn't actually do extra damage it just does that solid five percent damage and his uh shell shield ability what's it called um emerald skin or uh do 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 emerald presence <laughs> his emerald presence is just way better so you're never going to use toxic skin so that doesn't count so what they really, really need is a Dragonkin with aquatic damage. And I have the perfect setup here. So my all-time favorite uh, zone in all of World of Warcraft, I know this is weird, but I love Valshara. I just think that's the coolest place in all of WoW. I love the music. Oh. I love the, you know, just when I when I first started leveling there and I saw, like, the big giant uh, snake monsters and the, the giant turtle and then, like, this huge sharks that'll one-shot you. It's just so cool. Like, I just really, really like that zone. Wait, do you I, mean Vashir or Valshara? Vashir, Vashir, not Valshara. Okay. My bad. Yeah. I think they might use the same music for that, actually. I was about to but, say, uh, what's wrong with Valshara? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Uh, uh, Vashir, Vashir. Um, yeah, Valshara's fine, but... um, No, uh, Vashir is what I was thinking of with... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're like, what, what, what Valshara are you talking about? Um... Uh, no, yeah, Vashir is so cool. And if they would create, like, a world boss there, some sort of giant, uh, like a Leoplerodon, one of those, you know, old underwater, uh, you know, dinosaurs with, like, the big fins and the long neck. Uh, what did they call it? Like a Platyosaurus or something? I don't know. But mm. you know what? I, you kind of envision what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, and if they could create, about. like, a world boss, like, the, like a big giant Leoplerodon, that first of all, if I could drop like an underwater mount, like maybe a one percent drop chance, that would be the coolest mount ever. And um, if it dropped a pet, here's the pet. Mm-hmm. It's going to be called like let's say the let's say the the big rare or the big world boss is called like Levanthor or something. It's going to be called the spawn or the son of Levanthor, and it's going to be a dragonkin pet. With here, here, I'll make it easy for you, Blizzard, for you, Blizzard. Just literally take the same exact stats. And move set as the purple puffer, so it has you know surge available. It has a heal available. Put healing wave on a dragon. That's fine. Give it healing flame. I don't care. And oh, then pump. Damn. So give it, 
I don't care what so the other nice. abilities are. Just just make it so that it has surge, a heal, and pump, and you in in its dragons. Not, don't please don't give us another aquatic with surge, heal, and pump. Like no, that's that's not what I need. I need a dragon kin and make it just be like a little miniature Leoplurodon. Call it the spawn of Levanthor and make it drop from like this world boss. And that would be the perfect counter for a Tarot Claw because it does strong damage. It has a priority move with Surge. It can heal so that whenever the, you know, the 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 bird is dodging, you can just heal and you know, or pump, you know, just give you options. And that would 100% fix the uh, Tarot Claw. And it wouldn't be broken either. Like it could be easily counterable by anything with human damage. Any sort of darkness user is going to counter this, you know, this spawn of Levanthor because it, you know, darkness hits it hard counters its heal but it would fit in so nicely with this obnoxious meta we have where everybody just uses a tarot claw and it's so hard to counter like it's obviously counterable but you have to use certain weird kind of niche pets like the like the vengeful porky pet or the alpine foxling who can outspeed it with dazzling dance or that kind of thing if you want to have a chance against it Oh. And uh, then what makes a tarot claw really dangerous is if you pair them with, you know, a mechanical. Well, now you can't use a ventral porcupine or an alpine foxling. And so there's even fewer pets that you can kind of stand a chance against him with. So um, they don't need to fix the tarot claw, in my opinion. They just need to create just one dragon kin with that moveset I described. And I would, oh, I'd be so happy. It would, it would f- fix so much about what is really kind of broken in uh, PvP right now. I just I don't know. That's my idea, and I'll be so happy if they do it because it'd be great. I watch them I don't make know. it what a balance think? breed. What do you say? <laughs> they watch them make it a balance balance breed. Yeah, they're gonna make like a balance balance breed with like twelve hundred health and no attack power, and his speed's gonna be like negative <laughs> six. <laughs> they're gonna put like in the flavor text, be like, "Screw you, Lenica." <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that would terrible. be so. For those who are listening who don't know really other effective counters to the Tarot Claw, um, I really like the Northern Hawk Owl as a counter. It only comes in the Power Speed Breed, so you will always outspeed the Tarot Claw. Uh, You have Call Darkness to nerf its healing, and then its dodge only lasts one turn, so you just use a basic attack as a filler that turn, and then you hit it with Nocturnal Strike as soon as it's out. And that way, you can just burn it down in, like, four hits. Or so, an Axe Beak. Yeah, or a Mechanical Axe Beak. Or, no, no any of the regular Axe Because yeah. the Power Power so, Breed is faster than the Terror Claw. Really? Just yeah. barely. Just axe barely, right? That's all it needs. <laughs> you only need to be one point faster in order to be faster than someone. And then, Wait, like, four the power points power. Faster. Are you talking about the Power Power? Yeah, the Power yeah, Power Breed is faster. The jungle beak. I forgot okay. about that. I thought it was like 264. 64. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, I it's perfect. I told that. you guys. I mean, it's forever. Yeah. I made a what gimmick team know? with two power. A too. <laughs> I made a gimmick team with two axe beaks, and I ran into a tarot claw. You know, the whole shebang imp and a perfect wicked saw. I have my mm-hmm. name something else. I refer to it by its nickname, so I was trying to think of the real name for it. Uh, and I completely destroyed him with two axe beaks. Nice. Oh, and I thought, I was like, holy shit, I didn't know. I mean, holy gosh dang it. I didn't think it would work that well. <laughs> the doodles. <laughs> yeah, there's a yeah. lot of kids who watch pet battle videos. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I try okay. not to cuss for their parents. Same, same. <laughs> you are a good man. Oh. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I forgot about that. That's a very nice counter. Um, I, I, I haven't Told used the, <laughs> the jungle beak or the axe beak in quite a while. Yeah, because it also heals and hits like really, fu- I mean, really <laughs> hard. <laughs> wow, you got your your work cut out for you editing this video. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Um, here, don't say anything else. My storage says it's full and it stopped recording. Let me give me a second. I'm just going to delete some videos real quick. Got you, got you. Oh, you need a... Some let's external see. memory cards. Yeah, okay. I already have... Let's see. I don't really need anything out of here. I've already finished all that. Yep. What Ooh. other new pets are there? Oh, there's one other one that I don't think anybody knows how to get yet. Um, it's called the... It's called the Sun Darter Hatchling. It's actually a critter. It's a critter type, but it looks like a dragon. And uh, do you have your game open, Hiru? Yep. 
yeah, so so look up Sun Daughter Hatchling. This is a monster troll pet, potentially. Um, because it has the sleeping gas available if you want, or blink strike for basically just kind of that priority move to which is always nice on any sort of healy or tanky pet. Having a priority move makes you really hard to kill. So it has blink strike, it has ancient blessing, and it has sunlight all available. If you don't want to use that, you know, obnoxious healing build, you can use Ethereal to basically not be hit by nukes. Right, you can use Consume again? Magic so dots can't kill you. And you can counter Cyclone and basically just anything, like any sort of strategy. You can just counter with Consume Magic. It is a very powerful looking pet. Honestly, no matter what breed they put it in, and if they put it in a Power Power breed, he's going to be like tier one on the level of a blossomy ancient as far as being able to survive because he oh, does damn. have sunlight yeah like look at him he can't be stunned because he's a critter he is i don't What's i don't think anybody again? knows sun darter hatchling yes sun darter hatchling so uh when was this yeah, guy he's, added? uh he's just added and i don't yeah. think anybody even knows how to find him. he's a drop from an like oddly he's... colored egg yeah probably from easter oh, no Maybe it's one of those hidden pets, like that one Murloc and Yeah, Shazar. like Squirky. Oh, yeah, like a uh, Turkey. That's my guess. Is you know he's probably he might not even be available yet, and once he is, it'll probably be a minute before anybody finds him. But uh, I'm really excited about him. But he does definitely look like he could, you know, very well be annoying to go up against if you don't have a weather changer for that sunlight. And even without the sunlight, he's just a very strong pet if you run like either Ethereal or Ancient Blessing, you have Consume Magic, and then you have either an annoying proc uh, that you can throw out every other turn for a sleep, or you can uh, just Blink Strike. Hmm. Yeah, blink Strike. That's really really another monster. really cool one that's that's come out recently. Hmm. I don't know. You don't think so? You don't think he's going to be that good? Because he only has Blink Strike as like his basic attack, Sleeping Gas. Oh yeah, he's not going to hit up. hard. He's just going to be really hard to kill. Uh, I'm not sure about that though. Ancient Blessing doesn't heal that much, even under sunlight. Really? I thought well, that's Ancient... why I was saying like a Power Power would be really strong because it heals more based on your attack power. Hmm. Yeah, Power Power one, but then. Like, if Ethro and Consume Magic were on different tiers, maybe? Because being able to dodge and heal. But just Sunlight and heal. It's only one heal. And that's every three turns. And that he doesn't have a way to dodge moves outside of that besides a really weak Blink Strike. Hmm. That reminds that's me of, like, so. a... Whatchamacallit? Purple Puffer. He reminds me of him, kind of. Except oh, yeah. If pop. you can change the Sunlight, you know, he's not too hard to... But, um, you know, if you can't but change the is... sunlight, then pairing him with, say, a Tarot Claw would be a total monster. Because if you need that dodge, you have the Tarot Claw. Um, he's, the Tarot Claw is going to heal up more, more under sunlight. And you have two very healy, healy pets that are quite difficult to take out. Oh, I can see him as a nice tech option in a, a sunlight team. Since there aren't a lot of pets that can use sunlight that aren't garbage besides, you know, like the Sunflower or the Blossoming mm -hmm. Ancient... Mm -hmm. what mm, makes them I... good is like if it's the first time you've seen somebody playing it you don't know if they're running ethereal or ancient blessing and so you might go for like a big wind up expecting that they're going to throw out their big heal and then they ethereal it or you might go for a big dot setup and then they can see magic it so he's kind of a trick pet where if you don't know what your opponent's running he could be very difficult for you to kind of you know beat That's in mind true. games he does have a pretty big toolbox yeah. But in my yeah, experience, multiple with Ethereal and Consume Magic, they aren't really that good. I think this is the first uh, pet that we've seen with them, with, with both of those available on the same pet. Like, you, like, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, on the Ghastly true. Kid, you had to choose between one or the other. And I hated that because I love Ethereal, but I love having Consume Magic for if I r happen to run into that, you know, one odd clone dance team that I don't have a you know, way to remove their clone dance or anything. Having consume magic is a perfect counter for that. Hmm, that's true. But I always think of that one like voodoo pet who has uh, the clear the magic. Seer magic. Yeah, mm -hmm. seer magic. And it's never been that good. Like even when I use it yeah. to clear like a haunt or something, they just do one more ability on me, and I just wasted a turn clearing dots. Exactly. 
unless it's a curse of doom, then it's then it's pretty worth it. But then the next time you fight them, they know. Okay, just don't throw a haunt. <laughs> I think that's uh, not not haunt. Curse of doom. <laughs> you know, um, recently in one of my streams, I keep queuing against a bot, and I'm fairly sure that it is a bot because it's the same team. And they do the ex almost the exact same moveset set literally every every single time. It's the Anubis Sath Idol, the Disgusting Oozling, and then the Elder Python. And, uh, I mean, it's not a great team, but it will score a win every now and again, especially if you don't have anything to nuke the Anubis Sath Idol. And on my stream, I was just thinking, how do I counter this guy? And somebody suggested Willy, and Willy just absolutely destroyed him. It was wonderful, and he's really? become a new, a new favorite of mine. Yeah, Willie's a really cool pet. That if you're playing against a smart opponent, he's kind of hard to play well. But if you play against somebody who just kind of stays in, or you can root him, mm -hmm. and he is, or in a one v one, he is so strong. Um, not as strong now that they they nerfed uh, what is it called, eye blast to four round cooldown, the one that slows him. Yeah, well, they but made they eye blast left... better when they did that. Wait, how? Because it does full damage now. Oh, that's why they nerfed it. Okay, no, but like if they dodge it, <laughs> if they dodge it, then you're still slower and you're in trouble. That's yeah, the problem with it. Willie, he he's like one of the only pets in the game who can both change the type of the pet he's facing and then attack hard against it with mm -hmm. his lick, since he can turn them into an undead. And then he has a critter move, so he does more damage to him. That requires so much setup. Plus, you have to be faster than your opponent, so you have to use eye blasts. Yeah. Also, he is pretty RNG dependent because if you only get doubles on top, he doesn't hit that hard with his, you know, kind of pitiful yeah, 276 his attack power. Stats. He's so. an interesting pet, but I wouldn't say Anubis Sath Idol counter. Oh, Anything. well, I crushed that Anubis Sath and I killed almost most of the jade oozling with him and granted i'm fairly sure i was running against a just a pro not an actual person but yeah i've used him in a couple teams and just been really lucky with some of the matchups i've had hmm so anyway he was just something i've had fun with this week mm -hmm. he's he's a fun pet um yeah, just cute to do but yeah that's a good way to describe him he's a fun pet <laughs> funny looking <laughs> Yeah, he also has that animation where he eye blasts his, uh, critters if you run past him while he's out. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I wonder. I should have tried that at. Uh... Have you gotten Zoom, Hiru? Zoom? No, I haven't got him yet. So there's like a trick that you can do because the the achievement's actually kind of hard if you don't have like a trick to slow down. Because here's oh, the I think here's I saw the your gist video of it. On that. Yeah, like the gist of it is you have to cheat and kind of block the other snail so that Zoom can win the race. And if Zoom wins the race, then you get to keep them as a pet. But they're actually really hard to block without a cheat. And one of the cheats you can do is you can use a, uh, a fire, which will like seduce the snails or something, and it disorients them. And it, it does the what? same thing to Zoom, but it doesn't affect him as much since I guess he's smaller. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so um, I'm wondering if Willie will do the same thing where it'll like like eye blast them and slow them down <laughs> that'd be funny huh yeah i should probably go get him what are zooms oh wait i can look him up myself he's over in high mountain he's in the cave that's just like north of where all the fell tauren are pets aren't doing anything to each other h h yeah so um I think this in the podcast is probably the point where we would get questions from the community. Uh, you could either tweet those at myself, at Gomorath. Um, I do not know if my oh. Monica here, if he has a Twitter account. He does. Whoopsies, my bet. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think I'd... I remember looking for it when I first saw your channel. I was like, you don't have any social media I need to create one for this channel. Oh, this guy's going to destroy me. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, so tweet questions at us. Um, ideally, I'd like to put out two um, two of these every month. Uh, yeah, and Hero, if you would contact Hazel and see if she would be our next guest, that would be the coolest thing known to mankind. Hmm, I'll try my best. Yeah, 
And if it doesn't work out, that's fine. We have. And you guys uh, can get her to finally do PvP pet battles. <laughs> I doubt that. I think she's been pretty clear that she has no intention to do that. She's been doing them uh, kind of in her streams lately. Yeah. I've been pressuring her for years, and she's finally caving. Mm hmm. Because I've just been wanting other people to make PvP pet battle videos. Yeah, well, it's kind of cool that we have the. The PvP community is uh, PvP pet battle community is kind of exploding right now, where we got Linica, we got uh, Andre who puts out videos as well. He only has a few subs and he doesn't commentate his videos because he thinks his English isn't good enough. But which is think English is great. Yeah, it's <laughs> fantastic. And then Roscoe, our British friend, uh, he's great. Um, oh yeah, and God. then other people are. You know, other people who have participated in our tournament said they'd like to start channels of their own. So it really seems like the community's picking up, or at least the YouTube community. And then that, yeah, you remember that time. guy, Crazy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, he he, uh, he actually beat me that first game in the tournament. And then uh, he uploaded a video of uh, his first video with uh, his Sunfresh Rodent, the one that you're farming for. It was a mm -hmm. really great video. I loved it. It was, it was a really fun team. Yeah, man. I mean, it's only taken how many years was it just you and Doggy for? <laughs> it was just me for years, and then Doggy finally showed up. I was like, oh my god, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was so excited when he started doing videos. Yeah, I made yeah. a video immediately. He's like, hey, look, there's someone else who actually does PvP pet battles <laughs> with commentary. And there with are a couple other people. I have to, yeah, make that distinction because people do them without commentary, and that's just not my thing. Yeah, yeah me neither. Because usually they'll like either have nothing. Or like really kind of obnoxious music. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, no, it's it's kind of annoying. Um, there was one guy. Uh, what's his name? Z starts with a Z. Um, uh... Let me look it up. But I don't think he does it anymore. Uh, he he I, I loved his videos though. Um... Hmm, that sounds familiar. There's this one other pet battler guy. I found sure. he had really nice thumbnails. I don't think he did PvP pet battles. I don't. I don't actually do thumbnails for all my battles. Yeah, I, I just remember looking. I was like, "Holy shit! These. I mean, holy crap! These are way better." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. Like, it's hard for me because if I spend a day getting footage for a video and then editing the video and everything, by the time I'm to the point where I'm, it's the video is exported and I'm uploading it. It's like. I don't want to spend another 20, 30 minutes mm -hmm. to an hour doing a thumbnail. <laughs> oh, I know. oh, what do you make your thumbnails with? Uh, I use a free program called Photoscape. Oh, I use, no, I use Photoshop. Like, um, I got the real thing and I got pretty good at it because at my last job before I became a cook, I used to do a ton of stuff, like even GIFs. So I didn't know how to video edit, but I knew how to photo edit like anything. I can turn whatever you want into porn. For real, like I'm, I'm actually that good at Photoshop, and so making the thumbnail for me takes me about thirty seconds because mm. <laughs> uh, you know I can I can add whatever I want and uh, Photoshop. Uh, go. I know, I uh, Zimmy, those. his name was Zimmy, and uh, he, I don't think he does video. He does PvP pet battles anymore, but he used to back in the day, back in Wad, and I loved his channel. Um, but yeah, he was the only other one I think I found, um, uh, and. Yeah, I'm super excited because there's several people like just in the last month or so who, uh, like myself included, who who are now doing these videos and it's so much fun because the Legion meta is really fun. Um, like there are two zero, uh, two tier zero pets, you know, the Tarot Claw and the Bone Serpent, but they are counterable. So yeah, those are problems back in Wad too. Remember when yeah. I made a video about like the worst pets in Wad? I put Tarot Claw at the top of the list. It's like uh, everybody says Graves is the worst, but yeah, that's only yeah. because Graves is easy to use. Terra Claw is exactly. actually the best pet in the game. Mm -hmm. and, and back then once in the they day, finally nerfed Graves, everybody yeah, found that Graves out. used to be able to counter him. Uh, he would he would be able to solo a Terra Claw because his Grave Destruction just hit too hard. Yeah, and, at the yeah, end of the match. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think Graves was better than Terra Claw. It's just Terra Claw takes a lot more skill to use. When you have to know when to. Uh, switch out with him because Terra Claw isn't about just you know one v three in a team. It's about switching out and relying on his team mm -hmm. and healing in the back row. That's how you know a good Terra Claw player from someone who is probably just knows that it's the best pet and doesn't really know how to use him yet. Yeah, yeah. It's not like Graves where you just use all of his abilities until he dies. 
Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of get annoyed at people who play suicide pets like that. Or like when they're running Unholy Ascension on like either the Ghastly Skull or the Unborn Valk. And... Free wins. <laughs> well, yeah, I know it's a free win, but it's still just kind of annoying. It's like, why are you playing so suicidal? Because um, uh, they're probably just trying out something or they're not as experienced. Mm-hmm. Uh, Got to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I lost to a white pet earlier today. <laughs> that was level 23. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, well what it was was he had a magma rage link and uh he oh, put nice. out yeah, so what he did was he threw out his I my emperor crab was going against his magma rage link and he threw out the trap and then he threw out like the big hitting flame jet, I think what it is, and the flame jet crit and then the trap went off. And so like my emperor crab had like two health left and was stunned and yeah, and yeah, then I switched Ragnar to. Ragnar good. Yeah, he good is, especially, that. you know, like I'm not sure how you run him. Do you run uh, magma wave over flamethrower usually, or do you no, run flamethrower as a basic? Flamethrower, it's good. Yeah, yeah magma wave sucks. Flame well, flamethrower is really more annoying to go up against. Um, I like magma wave myself. But if you're not going up against it, there's really no way to know when the trap's going to go off at all, mm -hmm. dependably. At least you have a tiny chance. Like, if they're kind of going through a rotation and they run Magma Wave, you can usually try to dodge, and then if they activate the trap, it'll miss you. Yeah. But anyway, he just got super lucky. And then he was running the Fragment of Anger as his other pet, and then he got a, he stunned my third pet. And <laughs> he just got, two st or he got three stuns while I was playing against him, and his last pet was a white... It was like a white pet from uh, it's the well, the flyers out. They look like the oh the aqua fly right? Yeah, the aqua fly. That's what yeah. it was. He's a strong and, pet that you don't see very much. Yeah. Well, I so lost he got beat by a pet. white pet, but yeah, he had that two was other level... good pets on his team. So yeah, still he had a white level twenty three aqua fly, and he beat me. <laughs> well, he also had a magma rage lean and a and then fragment of anger. Yeah. Those are both really good pets. Yeah. They don't they don't think they ever actually nerfed Fragment of Anger besides his racial. Yeah, he's still powerful. It's probably not as OP as it used to be because that was the time of the meta and everything mm -hmm. was undead AoE. Yeah. But he's still pretty good. And I really need to update that the tier one list. Yeah, not not to give you any homework especially with all everything that you do but your top 25 pets to level the 25 that's, that's like now. the most watched pet battle video of all time there's so many pets that should be on that list now <laughs> Wait, how many that it might be one of the most watched pet battle videos but it's like one of my medium performing videos on the channel well did you did you put that one on your main channel or is that your pet battle channel that's on my main channel. Okay. Nice. That's why I was like, wait, yeah. really? It is? Oh, because it's, you know, drowned out by the other videos with, like... Yeah. Way more millions. Millions, <laughs> millions upon millions I, I only have two videos with a million views. Oh. Well, a third one's coming up. Wow. Which one's That's that? Still... Really uh, exciting. Top ten rarest mounts in the game. Ah, uh, People yeah. really love mount videos. Oh my I goodness! Really yeah. I'm a sucker earlier. for them. I love those videos. <laughs> like, even if it's something like I've seen all ten of them before, I don't care. I just like seeing mounts. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea because I don't care about mounts. And then I saw like all these. Uh, I think I was researching what videos do well, and I saw a ton of mount videos with a crap ton of views. I was like, I should probably mm -hmm. try that, you know, but like a good one. Yeah. <laughs> but like a good one. <laughs> <laughs> no, all your videos are good. Uh, that's great. Oh wait, I was gonna well, look at the. Wait, you don't have any questions? I mean, I don't have any. Wait, for you personally? No, I mean like, because uh, you said there was this part of the podcast where you'd answer questions. I'm pretty sure it'd be yeah. easy to think of what they would ask and then answer it preemptively. Okay, well, um, also, yeah. another thing we might be able to do in the future is we can be like, hey, leave your comments, and we'll answer your comments from last week's podcast next week. Oh yeah. Um, that way they don't have to like be you know tweeting them at us right now or anything and so like yeah 
There you go. You Leave comments. Account. Leave mm -hmm. comments in the YouTube uh, video, and we'll scroll through those, answer them all, um, unless they're, you know, uh, where do we live? We probably won't tell you that. <laughs> oh, so the top 25 pets video. It only has like 200,000 views. That's still a ton, man. It's just 200,000. <laughs> That's pretty. Uh... I mean, for like it, yeah, a YouTuber who makes, you know, who, who yeah, got who has living, a living but... off YouTube. <laughs> yeah. but, but I think as far as pet battle videos go, that's probably the most watched. Maybe I really probably. need to update it then, because at the very beginning, I tell you to upload. I mean, level pets for the Halbon combo. Oh which yeah, isn't a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that immediately needs to be adjusted, about... and it's it's all about PVE pets, really. I don't think yeah. I really go into PvP pets unless they're also a good PvE pet. Yeah. Like the and then you'll mention, oh, and by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, and by the way, this is also a really good PvP pet. I have a PvP channel. Hint, hint, go watch. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Still, it was super, super useful. Like, when uh, I was getting into pet battles, I watched that, and then I took out a piece of paper and wrote down all the pets you said, and then went out and captured all of those pets, slash bought them and leveled them up and really for new players and i i really do feel like the community is growing despite every time i post on reddit anything about pet battles like i posted the 10 things you probably didn't know about decoy on reddit and i mean it got like probably 5000 views but every comment was like people play pet battles this is the yeah. stupidest thing in the world you <laughs> suck that to be fair, that's what everybody says in, like, actual PV videos, too. Like, if you go on Zario or uh, cartoons or anything, they're just like, oh, people still play this game. Uh. Yeah. yeah, plus Reddit's PvP's not very nice. <laughs> yeah. No, Reddit is not a very kind place. I asked for, I was like, hey, I'd love some suggestions. I'm making a video about things you probably didn't know about PvP pet battles. And... All the comments were like, have you tried killing yourself? Like, <laughs> have you tried forfeiting? <laughs> no. But thank you. Very helpful. Yeah, that's why I don't post my own videos on there anymore. Uh, yeah, because, the uh, community's I have... nice, but the non-community is... Well, it's more like my subscribers are way more nicer to me than random people on Reddit. Plus, yeah. what I make doesn't really mesh well with what Reddit likes. It mm. does well on YouTube, but not so much on a different audience like that. So what? How would you describe the Reddit audience? Because when I posted my dark rat video on Reddit, I got like a thousand views within a day, which is giant for my channel. And I just I thought it would basically be the same people. Like if you're on the WoW subreddit thread, you probably watch WoW YouTube. Yep. Hmm. Uh, it's kind of the same people, but. Uh, Reddit has a better commenting system than YouTube by far. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't tolerate clickbait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is a really good way to grow on YouTube. It was, yeah, that's one thing that bothers me. So recently when I was getting the mechanical chicken, um, there's a guy who's got like 250,000 views on his and or not maybe maybe not that much but maybe 20,000 I can't remember but it was like make 15 to 20k per character with this pet you can't trade it like it's super deceptive <laughs> you know? oh, all those gold videos yeah so if you make a gold video uh like gold selders actively go out and like bot dislike, dislike those videos yeah wow that way people would go to and see a bunch of dislikes and like, oh, this is probably not the right way to do it. Maybe I should just buy yeah. gold instead. It's probably fake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it was a guy who had the mechanical chicken as how to get it, and then it said make 10 to 20K per character, and it's a non-tradable pet. So anyway, things is like it? that annoy me because I never want to be clickbaity with my titles or with the videos I make. It's all about I... doing it the right way. Mm-hmm. It's not bad in itself. It's just a lot of people abuse it. Yeah. Uh, but it can also be a very powerful tool if you're able to use it without actually being deceptive. Mm hmm. So, Hiro, you are probably one of the bigger WoW YouTubers out there. Um, oh, I'm a tiny channel compared to the big ones. 
Okay, well, <laughs> I think you're the biggest channel that I subscribe to. Uh, what advice would you give to new content creators such as myself or Linica or anybody who wants to start a channel about anything World of Warcraft, how to grow? Um, first, uh, actually make videos and okay. keep at it. There's a lot of people who start off and they do a whole bunch of planning. They're like, oh, I'm going to make a channel and get big. And then they don't ever really make videos or they make one and it doesn't do well and they get discouraged immediately. Hmm. It takes a special kind of person to keep uploading videos for months mm -hmm. without getting any views. And those are the kinds of people who usually make it. Yeah. And other than my... that, more specific advice. Wait, what were you mm -hmm. going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, it took me almost two and a half months to get a video to break 100 views. So, oh, I, and remember... I was putting out like seven video videos a week. Yeah, I remember that too. I was so excited if a video broke 100 views. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, oh, dang, that's like 100 people. I don't even know that many people. <laughs> I had it so easy because like you and Disco Doggy both gave me shout outs within like a week and oh, so yeah. it that's was a couple like oh, oh sorry that's because uh, I watch all of Disco Doggy's videos but I'm like a couple yeah. of days behind on it because I put all the videos I watch into a playlist uh, so I don't ever I really ever watch videos as soon as they're uploaded I usually watch them a couple of days later and he's like oh uh, there's a new pet battler he makes really good videos Lenica or something Lele, how do you say your name? <laughs> yeah, we're like, yeah, we're friends, and he still mispronounces my name. It's uh, Lenica. Lenica, um, he's like Lenica. Named after good my stuff. priest, mean. And I was like, oh, if Disco Doggy says he's good, I'm gonna go check him out. And I saw a couple of your videos, like, oh, this is kind of exactly how Disco Doggy does his videos. It's good mm -hmm. enough for me. Well, the thing is, like, Disco Doggy and I, uh, we have a bit of a history because back in the day, before he knew who I was, I used to watch his videos. And he made this video once about how there's this awful, trolly, just despicably <laughs> overpowered uh, player out there who does nothing but fiendish him and, like, unborn Val and death at her hatch. Like, that's all he plays. He's just a stupid, overpowered pest. He's so hard to beat. And at the time, I think the one the team I was playing was uh, my, my – I call it the A team. It's uh, it's Graves, MPD uh, – not Graves, MPD. Uh, Graves, uh, Ghastly Kid, fiendish him. And so you run Graves with Consumed oh, Corpse. God. It was – evil it was so hard to beat and i would just spam the queue with it because i didn't have that many pets so i would just play my best teams and i didn't care about having fun i was just there to get my five thousand ones <laughs> and he was telling me and he's like so i created this team just to counter the stupid Anthony nick swaggles and i'm like no way that's me <laughs> and i was just like giggling to myself because i'm like no way and so later on um he he hosts his tournament for like all the wild caught pets and uh, I participate in it, and I'm like, hey, so uh, do you remember this imp? And he's like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> so we yeah. became friends over that, and because of that, like, he knew that I was putting out videos. Of st like, I told him, I was like, hey, I put out my first video, and he, you know, he, he saw it. He's like, hey, good job. Um, so that, that was, I kind of had that advantage going into it, is we, like, knew each other because we had that whole history where I used to, I used to just spam the cues because we're on the same meta, and so he he and I would queue into each other, and he would beat me a lot, and I would beat him somewhat, and so it was, <laughs> yeah, I had that going for me. That is pretty sure. nice. You had Disco Doggy, and then you had someone who uh, values his opinion. Mm -hmm. He was actually in like I competed against him in one of my earlier videos. Uh, he didn't real. I don't think I either of us realized it at the time, but he was playing his team with the imp. Uh, the Warbot, and then the some one of the random Zandalari pets. Oh, I like uh, how your Warbot's Devbot Junior. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Definitely got a couple of my names uh, inspiration from you. I think uh, I think I named my Hydra my whatever I named him Polonius Junior. I think those are the only two. Oh yeah, yeah the... my Hydra Link. I had yeah. to try to name as many meta pets as I could after Hamlet characters. Mm hmm. I don't know why. Yeah. I just named mine after. Uh, my eventual pork a bit after the the rare Degu from uh, the Hunter pets porcupine mm. out in uh, oh, right. the, yeah the red porcupine out in what's it called Zinger Marsh. So that's a nice, well thought out name. <laughs> Hardly <laughs> Crescent Wilds at the top of Crescent Wilds is that little rare. Oh, that reminds me. Whenever I make videos, I have to 
like consciously think not to trash talk my opponent it's like oh they mm-hmm. made such a stupid mistake right there they must be an idiot <laughs> and, and i think oh shit like, the pet battle viewers. community is so small that there's a high chance <laughs> they're one of my viewers because <laughs> well, i've had that happen a couple of times be a before click or yeah uh, the same because you know, sometimes i'm like why did you do that yeah they'll message me and they're like hey i was that person in the video and i was like oh god i'm so sorry <laughs> Oops. i said some terrible <laughs> things about you <laughs> I swear uh, that was my little four-year-old brother who, who was making a video on my channel. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't oh, me. God. I didn't say mean things about you. Don't hate uh, on me. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, Pet Battles, it's like, because of Pet Battles, I had to stop playing Hearthstone because I could only have so much RNG in my life. So mm-hmm. they can get kind of uh, heated when you're on, like, a losing streak or you get just really <laughs> bad luck. It's not as bad as it used to be. Like, Pet mm-hmm, Battles used sure. to be, like gambling it was so hit rng chances. dependent hit chances mm-hmm. i hated God, it i'm so glad hit chances are gone thank goodness and i mean there there's a healthy amount that still exists like you know yeah. you can pa- you can it's pair nimbus with spirit now. claws but oh back in the day back that in the one, day everything had a hit chance like 95 misses 90%. in a row would just kill you i remember emperor crab i uh, stopped playing him for a while because i missed with his claw like three mm-hmm. times in a row in a match which had a 95% yes. chance to hit, mind you. That was awful. You know how unlucky you have to be to miss that three times? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty sure people play Darkness teams before they understand that. Yeah, but I mean, it's like a 1 in 60 chance, and it's awful. It's like 1 in 60, it you mean 1 in 2? Because that's how often you miss. <laughs> right. <laughs> Or I'll just go uh, doggy rages every time he gets a someone gets a crit on him. It's, like, it's only a five percent chance. <laughs> oh, he hates crits. I remember oh, there was God. one video. He just went on, and it was like he was talking about the last video about crits, and it was so funny. But I mean, this I get it because you know you when you do too many pet battles all in a row, it is just so yeah. rage inducing. Can make whenever you so you're cranky. like, I should have won that, and then you didn't. Uh, it's terrible. Like, oh, um, fucking RNG, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, but just go, he'll go off on huge rants about how crit shouldn't be in the game. <laughs> it's so funny because he does it so often. <laughs> right. Uh, but but like, we don't have inherent dodge anymore. Nocturnal strike. When nocturnal strike lands under darkness on an elemental. Oh my goodness, that's just. Oh, why would you even try terrible. that? It's a forty percent chance to hit. But like, but like, not no. Oh no, yeah, no, if my like opponent does it, in. I get nervous. I was like, oh shit, he's gonna hit me. In. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, oh, shit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I find that they land a lot more frequently on me than I can land on people. Isn't that yeah, how it feels? That's a right? psychological <laughs> confirmation bias. It's because mm-hmm. we're designed to remember negative events because mm-hmm. positive events are so mm-hmm. frequent. Yeah, exactly. That's why people yeah, are like, oh, the sense. world is so bad. Everything is terrible. Even though we're like living in one of the biggest eras of peace ever. That's because yeah. we remember bad events more mm-hmm. strongly. Like, yeah, if, if, have you worked in soft. customer service before? You said you I were. have, yeah. I was a delivery driver for a number of years. I worked construction. I've worked uh, retail stores. So, yes. I worked at, uh, you live in Arizona, right? Yeah. Have you ever heard of Golfland? Yes. Golfland That's Sunsplash. actually how I found out where you were from. It's when in one of your videos you said you worked at Golfland. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know where that is. Yeah, I worked <laughs> there for five years. Oh, man. And I can't tell you how many like bad customers we had, but... You know, uh, I would deal with like hundreds of thousands of people a day, and the fact I can only remember like one or two bad people from the day, yeah, should tell you something about how most people are actually pretty nice. Like a majority mm. of people are. It's just it's real easy to get a negative opinion on that because we as humans are stupidly designed to remember negative things more strongly. Yeah, that's why I can see him like, oh, I only get bad luck. It's like, well, it's because you kind of ignore good luck because mm. it's just natural. Yeah. Yeah, I had this one video where I uh, I won a fight against an elemental with hitting a forty percent nocturnal strike because my <laughs> bone barrage was on cooldown, and I was Dang. like, any and I had a hundred health left, and <laughs> so anyway, I I won the fight and was like, whoo, that was lucky. And then some guy in my comments, this guy named Brian who used to always talk shit in all my videos, uh, 
He was like, you hit under a 40% hit chance. That's so ridiculous. You talk about <laughs> luck? And anyway, then I, then I was like, yeah, that is really, really. Funny. Oh, I think the guy who was like, you, you got some lucky RNG, then you missed one. You're like, oh, where's the, where's where's the, the justice? justice? <laughs> He's like, where's the justice? What do you mean, where's the justice? Yeah, what happened was I had somebody, and they missed four times under darkness. Oh, so I man. killed their first pet without taking any damage. Oh, that poor all. hogger. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, oh man, hilarious. he must have been raging so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Usually something like that, they just kind of like rage quit and leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can't come back from that. No, you can't. I mean, even one or two misses usually can throw a match. Like yeah. if you're playing against a competent early opponent. on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like in the tournament where I hit my turkey stun when he had the immunity buff up. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. Like, oh. Yeah, because if I'd waited one more turn, I still would have been faster than him. I could have slept him, killed him, and then still been faster than his other pet and killed the other pet. But nope, I was not not smart enough. <laughs> oh, there's a horde. Sorry, sorry, Gomrath. I it's must okay. do it. I oh, know you're you're disgusting alliance. We won't judge <laughs> you for it. Oh, I didn't realize okay. you were twelve. Yeah, <laughs> you, that's one thing that I so dearly love about your videos is you're like, this is a way to play a druid with or play a war kid without playing as a filthy alliance or <laughs> without being 12 years old. Just your constant smack talking of the alliance makes oh me so God. happy. Oh, <laughs> alliance dogs. This is all of so us. many people. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was like a someone complained about it to Noble. You guys know who he is? Oh, uh, yeah, noble. he makes a great lore. I thought videos. he pronounced it Noble. Is yeah, it Noble? Noble, noble yeah. I don't know. Noble87. Yeah. They sent him a message. It's like, uh, is it okay for you to have an uh, alliance bias like that? Because Huruma Red X has a horde bias, and he's alienated a lot of his audience because of it. And I was like, I have? I do you really that. alienate, or is it just like, like fun? I don't know if anybody do. actually gets mad. Uh, no, people like apparently legitimately get mad. I just do it because uh, I think it's funny. I don't actually. It have is the funny. Alliance. Yeah, but I think it's funny to have like a gimmick like that where mm-hmm. in any video, even if it has nothing to do about it, you just stick to it. Well, it kind of makes you stand out because I think the majority of PV of of, uh, of pet the pet battle battle community, are they're all alliance. Yeah. yeah, they really are. And so if, you know, there's See, like another you, proof that all Jim the Banks pet battlers and, are. Mm-hmm. You know, children. So I gotta watch. My <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> roasted. Just another confirmation. <laughs> well, it's fine. Uh, we are about an hour and a half into this. Um, I think we should probably wrap this up just to keep it under like two hours. Uh, is there any other questions that we can answer preemptively that you were thinking about, Hiru? Uh. I think we pretty much covered everything. How to yeah. come through terror claws is like the biggest thing in pet mm-hmm. battles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of answers for that. None. Only a, because he's popular. Yeah. yeah, he's, he's the a, most popular. Yeah, he's the most popular overpowered pet. He's still the most overpowered pet. Don't get me wrong, but it's not, mm-hmm. you know, like Raves Bad, where everybody's running it and it's super easy to play. Because you can yeah. counter it even with a normal team if you're able to outplay your opponent. Which is mm-hmm. really yeah. hard. That's one of the things I don't like about it. I don't like to use my brain that much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and it's really annoying when you know you queue into somebody with a really, really obnoxious team. So you come up with a super, super obnoxious counter team, and then they don't. And then play you queue into this. that. Poor, yeah, you queue into that poor guy with the t- with the two green pets, and you're like, oh, <laughs> I actually I'm just let so him sorry. win if I do that. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, well, I feel bad now for using like you know this this obnoxious healy pet or whatever. Yeah, I know? think he's like, this is probably his first pet battle ever, and this community is already small enough. I should yeah. just probably let him win. Maybe attack him a couple times, kill a pet or two. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, otherwise they'll never play again. That's no fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I Like, obviously I'm saying this because I, f- I you know, I, ooh, here's that, here's that horde again. Um, <laughs> obviously I'm saying this because right now is Legion, so of course the bad things in Legion feel worse. But I do feel like the meta in... Uh, in Legion was uh, sorry, and Wad was a little bit less annoying, just because I will every now and then run into that one player playing, you know, something like Blasphemy Ancient, Emperor Crab, Tarot Claw, oh and it gets down to my last pet. You know, you know, I fight it out, 
and I have it kind of close, but then he just outheals me. And he just outheals me, gets up to full, nothing I can do about it. On like, Let's say it's his Emperor Crab, and I'm down to like, you know, my Hopling or something. And I just can't kill him because he can surge if I, you know, or, or just honestly just sh- throw up Shell Shield and heal. And that's exactly what they'll do. They'll literally just throw up their heal and Shell Shield and not even use their attack until yeah. I have to forfeit. <laughs> and that's just, oh, that's the worst because that didn't really exist back in... Uh, Oh, and, it did. Uh, like we've always well, complained about, you know, Terra Claws or Graves back in Wad, but really, it wasn't the most common. annoying team has always been Sunlight teams. Yeah, mm-hmm. there is the Blossoming Ancient. There, there was that. I just don't like to talk um, about them because you know, if you talk about yeah, it, then people true. will know about it, and then they'll do it. It's kind of like one of the things you just have to avoid ever mentioning. That way, people don't get any funny ideas. Mm-hmm. Kind of exactly. like if you tell someone on the internet that you have. Uh, a phobia you don't do that <laughs> yeah or like you have a trigger or something <laughs> this, <laughs> this send you pictures druid of here has Facebook almost page. a billion health without cooldowns pop dang that's crazy oh a billion health? Jeez. or no I 10 million that hard to believe. Yeah, 10 oh, million okay. 10 million yeah that sounds yeah. reasonable yeah, 10 million, well, 10 million yeah. sounds reasonable that's huge well my priest almost has 5 million well not all of us are mythic geared raiders like you. I'm not mythic geared. <laughs> I just have what? really good heroic gear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, my highest health pool character is probably my warrior, but his item level is like 880. Oh, I, yeah, I still haven't been able to break 900 on my, on my priest because I just don't do any actual content. <laughs> oh, you guys just yeah. do PvP? Yeah, my priest is over 900. Well, nice. I work like. Uh, approximately 50 hours uh, uh, where I cook and oh, so all I have yeah <laughs> all I have time to do whenever I'm playing WoW is level up pets and then make my videos or else I just wouldn't be able to keep up with you know I Dang. try to keep approximately a, in a, at least a daily or maybe every other day upload um, just because it, yeah, I just I don't know, have I, enough time to play <laughs> I was the same way at my old job they maybe mm-hmm. work 12 hour shifts constantly yeah I got I never... one of those tomorrow and then I have one on Sunday, which is my birthday. So oh, wow. not too happy about that. I'm working a double on my on my birthday, but I like the guys at work. So. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I, I used to yeah, work on my birthday all the time too. I know what that's like, and on all holidays. Yeah, oh. it's not an important birthday. <laughs> I mean, I'm turning 22. So. Oh, 22. That's. You it's... can play the Taylor Swift song. What? <laughs> is there a Taylor 22 Taylor Swift song? Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know that one. <laughs> oh, so shameful. Well, Hiru, thank you so very much for appearing on our first Taming Azeroth podcast. Um, if you have any questions, listeners, uh, yeah, just hit me up at Gomarath on Twitter, uh, or you can comment in the video section below. Um, but if I don't, do any of you guys have anything else, you can hit up. Uh, Hiru, he's got a million different channels, and then I think he has social media as well. Of course, all YouTubers need their social medias. That's the best way to actually contact a YouTuber, because the YouTube's in-game like messaging system is garbage. It's like uh-huh. under three layers of clicking buttons. Whereas wow. my Facebook fan page is connected to my regular Facebook page, so I get notifications through there without people actually finding out who I really am. So it's really convenient. It's like yeah. sending me a message directly. Or in Twitter, oh, nice. I check that a lot too. Because Twitter is a really good place for following famous people. It's not really a friend thing like mm-hmm. Facebook is. Like, it's not something I ever use until I actually started doing YouTube. And when I made my own, and then I got really into it as just the, the following other people. Because it's, uh, I don't know, it's interesting to find out what other people you like to do or just doing in their mm-hmm. daily lives. Mm-hmm. Like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, is she somebody you follow? Who's that? <laughs> She's a <Supreme laughs> take that as a justice. <laughs> and no, I was just recently watching Parks and Rec, so that's why I was thinking Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to follow celebrities and see what they're doing or tweeting about or just other YouTubers. It's a good way to keep up with what they're doing. That's usually where they talk about like what's happening behind the scenes. It's on Twitter. It's also mm-hmm. a place where a lot of people complain. I always like make it a point where if I post anything on Twitter, it can't be negative. Oh, nice! Because I used to probably pretty difficult. 
Yeah, because <laughs> one of the most, what should I call it? When you really want to post something on Twitter, it's usually to complain about something. That's what yeah, I kind of rant. Then. Yeah, it's like, oh, this stupid thing just happened. I'm going to go frustrate. I mean, uh, what should we call it? Go get that out there by complaining mm-hmm. about it. And I see a lot of other people do that. And it's like, I don't like to see this kind of negativity. And I was mm-hmm. looking at oh, my Twitter feed one day and it's like, this everything I post is kind of negative. I should probably stop that. <laughs> well, that's just advice for new YouTubers like you guys were asking. Uh, don't be super negative be conscientious about it also learn how to edit yeah so learn how to edit is better <laughs> i know i need to i need to edit. but i'm pretty happy i finally figured out what was going on with my videos you just have to use mp4s not movies and yeah otherwise premiere files. pro just kind of really yeah it literally goes from like like i said it took over two days for me to like, like over 48 straight hours just to edit just to render like a barely edited uh 30 minute video and then it was my <laughs> oh, yeah, orphan fell that so one <laughs> it was my orphan fell that all i had to do was cut out an awkward 30 minutes where nobody was queuing and then i just wanted to render the video and it took over 48 hours to do that because it was an what? mov yeah <laughs> for real i got a That's fast crazy. computer so when i changed when i started recording as mp4s you know i did a 45 minute or I think it was yeah, it was a forty-five minute one because it yeah, was that the sounds uh, like normal. Yeah, light. yeah, forty-five minute video, and it took about about an hour or two hours or something. Like, no, it was like not that's not so bad. Yeah, yeah, very reasonable. Also, with thumbnails, use thicker outlines on the words. That uh, way, it can be gotcha. read at because you got to remember they're really small images to mm-hmm. people, especially like on phones and stuff, which is yeah, probably yeah. what most people watch my videos on. Is you know, yeah, phones and stuff. You got to make <laughs> because sometimes. Uh, I see a lot of people who are new to making videos. They they make the thumbnails. They don't use an outline at all on their words, so you can't even see it. Mm-hmm. It just blends in. That's. But then again, you said you're really good at Photoshop, so I'm pretty sure you know the rule about how outlines on words allows you to read it over any kind of color. I usually just choose a color that that uh, sticks out well, but uh, that would be much smarter too, is to do that. Yeah, just have thick outlines on the... It can be any color you want, but there are like psychological theories about which colors are more visible. That's why I use mm-hmm. yellow, because yellow. it is the most visible uh-huh. eye-catching color yellow. there is. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then black outlines, so you can actually see it at a glance. Yep. Yeah. Whew, you know, boring grunt work stuff. <laughs> I could yeah. probably go through and look, look at the stats of which ones of my videos have I done like yellow words on thumbnails and, you know, just kind of see how many more views I've gotten on them. Cause, uh, you know, it, is, it is really nice. It does kind of dry when you're, when you're scrolling through. Oh yeah, it's all about tricking nice. people into watching your videos. Aha, got them. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's leave them wanting more and uh, call it a day. Uh, sounds good to sounds me. Good. Yeah, I, I, feel like, I feel like I covered just about everything I wanted to rant or try not to rant too much about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, good. well... Thanks for tuning in, guys, and we will catch y'all later.